Hello and welcome back to Stu Structures. We're going to build a typical building that you saw along almost every railroad back in the steam days. Now that they're uh, putting out more and more contracting to people to take care of the rails, there's not so many of them. But back in the day, every railroad had section gangs and every section gang had their own little house that they worked out of along the railroad. So we're going to build a section house. So stay tuned. Okay, welcome back to Stu Structures. I am Mark Stewart. Um, you know, I said we're going to build a section house. Uh, for those of you that are not familiar with section house, I kind of described it a little bit, but you know, most railroads had little areas and they had local gangs that worked out of little small areas to take care of a section of the rail back in the day because they did everything manually before machinery. And, uh, you know, I model the steam period, and during the period that I model, there was a lot of these section houses all along the Beano Railroad throughout the area that I lived. In Grafton, all along the yard, the pictures I see looking up the, uh, the, the creeks and the rivers, there's just tons of them along the railroads. Uh, so, you know, I'm, I'm going to need a bunch of these. So anyway, I've decided to go ahead and just build four initially here. Uh, maybe later on when I start putting a layout and a plan and everything together, I may have to come back and build more, but I figured four would give me a good start if I'm going to have a nice size layout. So we're going to build four section gang houses. So here we go. So, you know, I went downtown. There is an older section gang house down in town, and I just went down and took some pictures of it. I used one in my intro that you saw a picture there. But I just came down and uh, took pictures of all four sides of this. Uh, this is about the size of the ones that we're going to build. Now the ones we're going to build are only going to have windows in one end because the, the main plans out of the uh, general plan book uh, only really called for one window and one end. And this does have rails that come out of it so they could put a car or a uh, speeder or something in it so they could move stuff, materials around around on you know the, to do their job with now we're going to use this basswood which is uh, scribed like siding to cut all the walls out of and it is wood so it's going to look good as wood and I just go ahead and cut sides out for all four walls on all four of these structures that we're going to build and uh, you know once I get those done I come back and take a knife and scribe and in a file and file down all the corners to you know close to a 45 they're not exact they're gonna have trim boards on the corner so if they don't meet perfectly it's not a big deal but they probably will pretty close now I go ahead and cut out the door openings on all these you know, I did break one of the little legs you can see on the lower right hand side off of one of the doors, but we'll glue that back in place as we go ahead and work on things. And then I just start, there's two sides that do not have windows or doors. So I go ahead and use my square and start framing up or gluing together those four walls in the corners on the back corner that don't have any openings in them. Now I don't really have any windows for these so you know I'm going to make my own windows and I'm going to use this these different sizes of styrene here to do that. Now I'm not a big fan of making windows that they're hard and tedious uh, but I, you know I just don't have anything and I'm going to go ahead and make these. So I use the larger one and go ahead and cut all the sides for you know all four windows. And I glue those together in corners and then put all the corners together to form the outside loop. And then I just come back with the smallest size and put it in the middle and cut it off with my X-Acto knife and then glue it into place. And then each one of the smaller members, you know, on either side of that main one that's crossing the middle of the window. Now, they're not as nice as Tichy windows when I'm done with them, but I think once they're painted black and put in the frame and the, the trim goes on the outside of them onto the wood uh, and everything's painted black, I, I don't think they're going to make that big of a difference at all so you know I just went ahead and made windows this is you know, not something I really recommend to everybody it, it's a pain in the butt to do uh, and they're not perfect by any means but I think they'll serve my purpose 
Now the next thing we need to do is put together these doors and you can see they're four panel doors and they're actually double doors that swing and, and don't slide back like a pocket type of door and you can see the angled wood in the inside panels. Now I'm just going to use this balsa wood for this and uh, you know it's nice and thin. I'm going to have to probably put a backing piece on it to uh, give it some strength. Uh, but what I do to get those 45 degree angles to the wood inside those panels is actually cut the wood to the 45 degrees. And I use a knife upside down to then scribe all the lines across these panels once I get the height of the panels cut. And I just cut these a little bit wider and taller than the door so when I put two of them together I can just glue them to the inside of the door. And then I go ahead and cut a second piece for behind it and then glue the panels together. And you can see the nice scribed lines and uh, you know it, it mimics the boards and those inset panels really well. Now that those are put together I'm going to come back and finish putting you know the walls together uh, to install this in. So I install those walls and glue them to the previous piece I did. Then I glue the windows in these end walls and uh, you know just glue them into place for the time being. And then I come back and I glue those walls onto the end of the building. So the four walls at this point are glued together. Now the corners aren't perfect, but remember I've got trim boards that are going to cover the corner, so I'm not too worried about that at this point. And then I come back and glue those door pieces to the inside of those doors, making sure that the angles on all of those inset panel lines are at the right angles going down from the center out. And then we're going to start to trim. Uh, this just kind of ties everything together. And I have this scale lumber that's a 1x4 that I'm going to use for trim. And I just come back and start cutting pieces. And I cut the top piece of the, the door because the side pieces come up to meet that. And uh, the two ends of the buildings and the two side walls. And then uh, I go ahead and paint those black and then come back and glue those onto the building and you know just get those first pieces on pl into place now i could have went ahead and glued the bot or went ahead and did the bottom of the door piece clear across at the same point that i did that but i didn't so i had to uh, actually do an extra step and come back and cut pieces for the bottom of the door and paint them black and then put them on. It's much easier to paint this type of stuff before you put it on because it'd be so tedious to come back and paint those. And then the whole door pieces, I can go ahead and glue those into place. And here you can see I've got the two uprights uh, uh, pieces in each of the doors that separate in the middle. And then I come back and put those separation panel pieces about three and a half feet off the ground. And that gives me all the wood in my doors. And I can just come back and paint the insides of this. And, uh, you know, then I go around the building and just do all the rest of the trim. And I pre-paint it and glue it on. And I do the windows. I, I do the two sides to the windows because the top piece overlaps and then the, the bottom underneath the window is just a little wider. So I cut the two sides first and then do the other parts as a second step to that. And all the walls are basically finished. So now we're going to come back and start uh, working on uh, a roof for that. And I want to get some support uh, for the roof. So what I do is just come back and paint this ceiling piece in here. I get a center line on it. And, you know, I know basically that it's a, the, the high part of the roof is about three and a half feet tall and about four feet wide by this. And all four sides come up to meet the peak with that four foot ridge in the middle of the building. So what I do is I cut four panels that are three and a half feet tall by four foot wide and I glue them in the center of that line and that gives me the height and the center of where my roof is going to be. Then I just come back with a real thick piece of plastic and cut all these long strips so I can come back and start cutting the angles that will support the roof. And, you know, I, I, at first I cut all these and then they were just a little bit short. So I had to come back and cut them a little longer. <coughs> Excuse me. 
and uh, what I did was just cut them a little long and then as a one by one I went through and fitted them because you know they're, the buildings they are just not perfect each one maybe have a little bit of variance in them so I do the four corners and you know I'm using that real thin plastic for the roof so I came back and did the center supports in these as well to give that real thin plastic a little more support and then I went through my junk box and just found a bunch of this real thin plastic that were scraps from other projects and I want to use this first so I'm not cutting up a brand new sheet or for sale sign just to do this with now I come back and mark a one foot along the bottom edge of that because I'm the roof overlaps the building actually about a foot and a half but I'm going to do one foot overlaps and I just turn the building upside down on that and use that one foot mark overlap and just use a pencil and mark where the ridge lines are onto the plastic. And then I come back and just cut that to that. And the pencil lines are actually just a little big. So what I do is I test fit it and then, you know, recut it, test fit it, recut it till I get it right. And then I go ahead and glue this in place. And I just do, you know, one side, I do the opposite side, and then I do the two small ends to meet the overhang on those to get those all finished. But, you know, it's just a, a, a long process of getting this right to glue them on, basically. Uh, you know, once the last four are on, we have the basic structure for the roof, so we're ready to move on to the next phase, which is trying to get some roofing material on these. Now these would have been built with probably a paper felt type of roof. Some of them did have shingles on them, but I found this vinyl in uh, one of the hobby shops and I, I want to try and use it. I think it would look good like as a slate. Uh, it is a, a self-adhesive, a peel and stick type of thing. So anyway, I go ahead and cut these long strips and then I, you know, just use a hobby knife and do indiscriminately shingles along one side of those and cut them into short strips and then just slowly start working them up from the bottom to the top and do each side of the building. You know, and I just run these a little wild and then I take a knife and cut both edges of them into the seam of that plastic so that I know I have a good flush edge to put the next side of the roof up against. And I do the two opposite sides the way I did the plastic and I trim both of those and I come back and put both of these ends on as well. And then I come back and I will trim these next so I have a good meat in the shingles from both sides. Now on a lot of the B&O small structures, and this building wouldn't necessarily have tried it, but I wanted to try and do this, so I'm going to just experiment with this building. So, you know, they had this ornamental ironwork on a lot of their small structures. So I'm going to use this uh, 20 by 40 uh, strip styrene, and I'm going to just cut uh, lengths of those for either sides of the two gaps of where those shingles meet. And I come down and do the two lower sides, and then I go ahead and do uh, the top piece as well. And, uh, you know, this just gives me a good joint. It'll also be something to kind of help hold down uh, the shingles as well. Now these, you know, this would have had kind of a, a T that set up on top of that ridge. And I didn't really have any T's. You can get them out there. But I just went ahead and took a real small eye beam and cut one of the uh, flat pieces off of one lower edge and made a T. And I just came back and, you know, glued those onto the top of it for the cap and basically got my uh, top on it that way. Now I need to put some glass behind my windows. I just have this packaging uh, that I've been saving for a long time and it has these nice big panels uh, to use for windows. So I come back and cut out all those panels and I do save all the curved other things because there might be some arch architectural stuff coming up that I need this particular shape for. So I'll just throw these in a baggie and save them. And in the panels I just cut down, you know, these are oversized for the windows in the building. I'm just going to go ahead and uh, you know overlap the windows on the inside and glue them in place in the window and then you know the basically the windows are done at this point then. Another thing I want to do is to add door handles onto the doors and I found this real real fine really heavy uh, uh, gauge steel wire 
I'm not sure where I got this from. And I just take some needle nose and I bend all of these uh, handles. And I just make them long enough that uh, they'll go through the balsa wood. And uh, you know, then I use this drill, which is just a real fine bit. Uh, keep a lot of these on hand. Uh, I did break this one before I even got it taken out of the drill and put back away. Uh, you know, I had to go through tiny bits. But I come back and glue those on, and, you know, and drill out the holes and glue those in place in the doors. And then we have our handles in place. And I just come back with some bronze paint and put that on them. It kind of makes them look like a brass collar uh, and it just kind of gives it the doors a way for the people to open and close them so it's just another, another little detail thing out of the way now you saw I had the rafters in place in his last two pictures. To do this, I just came back and found a bunch of this real thin uh, plastic that was from those signs left in my scrap boxes. I like to use scraps every time I have the opportunity to to save plastic, and I just you know cut these real long strips out of them, and I think these are about nine inch in scale uh, width, and you know they're little not as wide as I would like them to be but I come back under the eaves and I measure two foot on centers and just put my lines in all the sides where those are going to be and you can see the ones I have cut down there laying on the table beside of it and just with tweezers I pre-glue them and then uh, take the tweezers and put them into place up under that eave and, and let them set up and glue into place I just do one side at a time and let it set up then I come back and do another side and get all four sides of those done and then once that's done uh, I can come back and paint under there now I did add a strip and pre-paint the strip uh, along the side wall that meets the roof as well that way it's easier to come back and give you a good edge to paint against so it's not so tedious uh, to do that now the whole building needs a foundation and there's several different elements that have to be glued together so I just cut these paper squares that are you know a good bit bigger than the foundation I need to work with I found these two different thicknesses of uh, woods that I can use to layer up the foundation of this building to come even with the top of uh, rail because remember rails would have come out of that and I measured everything and just cut my basic piece now you can see I left that opening because we have the rail that sits down in there that the speeder or hand car would have been sat on. And I come back and just glue this to paper and leave it set up with some weights on it for several hours so I know it's not going to curl and move around on me any. And I use a square when I do this to make sure it's all nice and square. Now for the track of this, I'm just using some old flex track that I had that was used. Uh, the rails kept popping out of it. It's definitely old and abused. So I had to re-glue the rails down to the uh, plastic as well. And I trim some of the, uh, the wood that goes back in what sits back in the concrete of the building. This really won't be seen and the ones that stick out of the building I leave long. Then I come back and glue that down to the paper in between the wood in that opening so that the track is in place on the foundation. And you know, I could probably go ahead and paint this sticking out, but I didn't. And then I need to come back and overlap where the ties are on the inside with a second layer of wood, which will bring the whole surface up to the same level as the top of the rail. And then once I glue, get all that glued into place, I come back with some green stuff. You can use any type of a filler and just fill all around the edges to make it look like a good concrete and lightly sand the top as well. And you know, once you come back with some concrete colored paint, that's the whole foundation ready to set the building on and uh, you know, be something solid for the building to be on. Now later we can paint the, uh, the track and the rails as we put them into place on the uh, layout and the scenery material will come up around the concrete some so it won't look as thick as this once you put them into place. But basically here's the four of them you know pretty much about done. Now I only did the T-rail on one and not on all four of them. The other four I just did basic shingles on. Uh, but it's a nice little structure that will add a whole lot of interest to your model railroad. So there you have the building of a section house for your model railroad. You know, most railroads, the section houses were all really similar. 
and you know except for guys that model real real modern period uh, there are a few of those still setting beside railroads here and there but there's not a lot of the section houses left anymore uh, section gangs went along the wayside a long time ago and most railroads just subcontract out all the rail repairs anymore there's not a lot of railroads that take care of their own rails and even when they do they have high rail trucks and stuff to go to the sites they don't have these little sheds sitting along the railroads with crews permanently posted in them to do the work uh, but you know I model steam era and there was tons of them back then and even into the transition period a lot of them lasted because a lot of the railroads did their own work and had section gangs and then they just started disappearing over time um, but a lot of these buildings during the early period especially you know if you're if you're modeling steam days these are something that would typically be along the, your railroad and they're an easy building to jump out there and scratch build if you want to do um, you know, it's one of the easier structures that you could build to learn with. If you're looking for a building to learn how to scratch build, uh, this is a great one. And you know, you can use different things uh, for the walls and roofs and everything. Not all of them were the same. A lot of these section houses had tar paper on them. I did do the, uh, the, the uh, shingles on them. And the one I did the iron cap work on, that's something that typically did not make it onto the section houses. Uh, but it is something I, j I just wanted to try. Uh, so I did put it on one of the houses. I like it. Uh, the scroll pieces up on the very ends of the points of the top ridge piece I did not put on there. Uh, that would be really complicated that small to make. I, I know you could probably go to uh, a, a plastic printing place and have them printed or uh, get somebody to mold you some. I could mold them. I just didn't want to go into that process with this basic small building. It's not really that. They weren't meant to be ornamental buildings. They're just a, a place out in the middle of nowhere for guys to keep their tools and stuff to work on the railroad. So there was a no frills building, basically. Uh, these do have tracks in them for the uh, you know speeders or uh, flat cars or anything that they use to go up and down the rails to haul materials to where they were working. Uh, but it's just basically a basic building. No heat. There was some shelves in them and uh, some stuff like that but very basic buildings so anyway thank you for coming back and sharing this time with me i do appreciate it uh, like and share these videos a lot of people out there would like to know how to uh, do some of this stuff and you know this is just easy how to's on how to do some things jump out there and scratch build some buildings and play with some of these techniques and build your craft and learn how to do some of this stuff it's really not that hard it's just more time consuming uh, than complicated actually uh, subscribe to my channel and hit the little bell icon down next to the subscribe button and you'll be notified when I have new content coming out uh, I do appreciate you spending this time with me. I hope you're learning something. Jump out this winter and just scratch build some buildings. Uh, get your trains out and play with them and enjoy your time. Uh, it's a good escape from reality and the snow and the dreariness of outside this time of year. And, uh, you know, it's something I really enjoy this time of year. So, uh, you know, break all that out and, uh, you know, do some things for your model railroad and happy model railroading.